So, <laughs> Simão. So I'm, I'm going to make a little bit of an introduction. Simão was my colleague at university, mm -hmm. and he was the CTO and CEO of this enterprise that yes. I belonged. Um, so, Simão, tell us who you are. <laughs> well, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, I am Simão. I'm a kid from this city you studied in. Um, I'm 21, 21 years old. Um, I love technology. I love people. I love uh, management. I love business. I, I actually love a lot of things <laughs> besides uh, 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 myself, of course. <laughs> no, uh, I'm just joking. The thing is, it's kind of hard to say who I am because I'm not really uh, a person who is something by themselves. I think I'm always a bit part of what I'm doing and the people I'm around. So right now I'm your friend. <laughs> it's, it's who I am. Yeah, cool. um, I'm someone who worked with you. I'm someone who had my experiences that, that we shared together, our travelings, our projects and, and all of that. Um, and I'm also the work I'm doing currently. Um, for those who don't know, I studied design in university, mm -hmm. just as you did. Um, as Danielle said, and, and, and very well, I was the, the CEO of Genealogy. Was, perhaps the, the most important experience of my life, so far, of course. <laughs> um, and all throughout my life I've had several smaller, some other bigger projects which have driven me to push forward and to, to keep on doing different things, things that I always enjoy and things that um, I try to, to, to get other people working on as well. Mm -hmm. one, one thing that really caught my attention when I first met you mm -hmm. is that it seems that like you entered university or started the course with in the same level, even better than I had when I finished. Oh, it's like, right. wow. <laughs> how did you do that? Um, see, I I think I'm not sure what that means exactly mm -hmm. because there are so many things we learn in university and and th maybe not even just university, but through the years that we are in university. I think those are very prolific. Um, I think what you're talking about is design-wise, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, working and, and right. In that sense, um, it all started started a, a few years back from 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 when we started. Uh, I was about 15 years old when I first uh, learned about what you know what I thought design meant at the time. Um, I started enjoying to draw. Uh, nice pictures and, and using the computer to draw those pictures um, But all of that was always with the goal of maybe not not a very uh, 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 Valued goal for some people, but for me it was always what what drove me at the time which was to to make some money um, I Really enjoyed going to concerts and 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 to to other types of things that ha you had to pay for them, you know and and I, I hated to ask my parents for you know more money money than they already gave me and so I, I had to find a way to um, pay for my expenses at the time they <laughs> they weren't a lot but there was something that I had to, to, to pay for and the the first or one of the first things that I could think of was making and selling t-shirts uh, it was such an easy thing. You could buy uh, at the shop, you could buy the, the printing kits and you could go at home and use an, an ironing uh, board and, and just iron it out. In five minutes you were making five, ten t-shirts at a time. Um, the only thing I couldn't do then was draw pictures on the computer. So I set myself to learn that uh, and things went on from there. I was 15 at the time, I think I said. Um, then I started high school. I studied just up there. This is sort of why I, I, I suggested we, we started it out here because this 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 uh, little garden here is it's a place I come to sometimes just to relax and it sort of brings back some old memories and when I started high school um, I decided I no longer wanted to sell t-shirts because not many people wanted them I, I had reached a, a point where I couldn't sell them anymore and so it stopped making sense because the whole purpose was to make money and mm -hmm. if, if I'm not keeping up with my purpose then it, maybe yeah. I should just stop. Um, so what happened next is is I stopped for a year. I, I, I put everything aside and just thought about it. Kept 
getting a little better, got more interested about design, started to learn about how design is not just something you do to make money or is not something you do to make things beautiful and that there's so much more to it than just drawing pictures on the computer. Um, how uh, brands work, um, how uh, people use design to improve their lives, other people's lives, um, how architecture works. I, I was very, very big into architecture back then. Um, and so all of those things came to what happened the year after that one, which was that I rethought my project and what started as uh, uh, selling t-shirts turned into uh, the tiniest design studio you can think of. <laughs> I recruited a friend of mine, again, people and how, how I enjoy working with people. I recruited him to, to, to come do a few projects with me and through some you know, friends of friends of friends of friends, I learned about this guy, this DJ, a person from, from around here, who was looking to grow his uh, personal brand, if you, if you may say. Um, he wanted to have more and more shows, he wanted more people to follow him on Facebook and, and other social media. And I proposed to him that we started a little partnership together. Each month he would pay, I think it was 50 euros to me, and of course split 50% uh, to each me and my friend. Uh, and we would um, start growing his, his brand. And things actually started to work out. He, he was getting more calls, his pages were getting more following. Um, and then very organically, a few other clients uh, per se started to, to, to come into our, our little studio at the time. We, we, we worked together for around two years, then we started university and things sort of fell apart. But that's, that's really how it started. But to answer your question and to, to really get through to what you were asking me, yeah, it was really that, how I got interested in design way before I, I, I decided to study at, at the University of Greenberg. Um, I, I can't say that I was better than, than, than you were when you finished because I'm 100% sure that there's a ton of other things that you are much better than I am or ever was or ever will be because that's what you're interested in. But there's definitely a, a few things that I had learned prior to university that really helped me succeed at getting, you know, good results during that those three years. Yeah, because like in, in the first year we were like doing our doing our work, like yeah. very starting out, and <coughs> we looked at you and at work. We were like, what the heck? <laughs> like, <laughs> how did this guy think of this? Like, yeah. where did he? He's like a magician or something. Like that? <laughs> So yeah, like we were always very impressed. I think and just, just yeah. one minute just to, to finish it up. I think what really, because at the time you were struggling with concept and execution, mm -hmm. right? I had execution done, right? I, I knew how to do what I wanted to do. So I could just, you know, focus on the concept. I could just think about the, 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 the product, what I, would, what I wanted to achieve with that project. Yeah. I think that's what, what you know, set me apart from, from, from other people at the time. And do you see any clues of that entrepreneurial vision or artistic vision before you were 15? Sure. Um, there's this one episode, which I can recall, that, I mean, at the time I couldn't really tell what that meant. You know, I was yeah. very young. Uh, but now, a few years later, I can, I can sort of tell that that was maybe a, a starting point to all of that. I, I took part in a, a summer, you know, one of those vacation type of things, mm -hmm. sports vacations, you know, that's, that, that type of thing, in the um, basketball uh, club that I was playing at. Um, and we, I think it was a week of, of activities, and in the end, they they had a few prizes to give out and I was really not expecting it and and neither were them I think because it was something that they put together you know very uh, very quickly uh, but they gave me a, a prize I don't know I'm not sure what they called it but it was sort of for being the most like for leading everyone else okay. because like 
whenever we started an activity, everyone was really concerned about who they were going to stay together and, and what they were going to do together and that sort of thing. And I really didn't care about that. I, I knew a few people, but I, I wasn't their best friend. So I would just, you know, go fetch a, a group of people and just start doing the activity. And whenever there was an issue, I always sat back a little and tried to think about it. And maybe not consciously, but at the time, I think that's what really set me through. Great. And another thing, about one year ago, right? so you were taking a course on Islam Multimedia. Mm -hmm. You were leading a student enterprise with 40 people and you were working full time. Yeah. How? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Those were tough times, I've got to admit. It, it wasn't, it's something that I maybe, if, if I were to do it again, I probably wouldn't. And I'll, I'll tell you why. It doesn't really have to do with time or with uh, uh, energy or with not getting enough sleep. It really has to do with uh, what, what might be a consequence of all of that together. It's something you can, you can do for a while, but you cannot keep up with it. And you will start to feel how that wears you out in the other aspects of your life. Meaning, I was getting work at school done i was getting good results i was getting good results at work with my 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 job and and i think you guys at schnalls were, were having a good time and i think we sure. were doing great projects and 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 working together uh um in a good sense and, and and making progress but after a few months of that my personal relationships started to wear out you know maybe not because i wasn't spending time with the people i liked or or people i loved or my family or my girlfriend or whatever it, it was mainly because the time I was spending with them was not their time it was time that that my mind was still going through what either had been done that day or what had to be done the day uh, after and so even though that felt possible in the beginning uh, after that it started being uh, really tough to deal with I I enjoyed it either way. I think it was a, a period of growth. I think it made me understand my limits. I, I now know when I am too tired to, to work or, or whether I'm doing too many things at once. But it was, in my case at least, necessary to have that experience to now be able to say, yeah, this is where I'm going to stop. Have you ever had a burnout? I wouldn't call it a burnout per se but I've had bad days. Everyone has bad days. What I think I didn't have is, is, is the feeling that from one moment to the other, I was gone. No, that never really happened. And how do you think people can get out of that situation if they feel they are working too much? Or um, their personal relationships? Right. There's, there's several reasons as to why that might happen. Uh, there's, there's that in which you, you may set yourself with too many compromises where you're working together with too many people there's that where you uh, feel like you could do it but now you're sort of realizing you can't and then there's the, the last one which I'm really not going to talk about because it was not my case and it was that maybe you have to work two or three jobs to you know sustain yourself and your family that was not my case uh, my parents always give me what I need and what I don't get from them I, 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 I pay for myself because I work um, but getting out of something like that is is only up to you you need to learn to start to say no the, the same it, it's basically going back from where you started you, you, you start to feel like you need to say yes to everything a cool project comes along and you feel like oh yeah I can do this and then another one comes out and you think yeah sure it's only two projects and then another one and then it's three and then it's four and five and six and, and and little by little everything starts to pile up and you come to a, a point where it's just impossible for you to, to to deal with everything what you need to start doing is going back starting to understand which projects you enjoy the most or or which one of them you can get the most out of for example um, and then if you're someone who's who's my, like me and doesn't really enjoy disappointing other people it's a slow process because you need to start saying goodbye to other people 
people you've worked with and sometimes other people don't really understand that too well and if you don't cater to their needs as well if you if you if your leaving isn't uh, prepared if it's something very sudden if it's something they don't understand that can lead to other personal problems for example if they're your friends uh, I wasn't too worried about that because I knew at the time that I was feeling this way there was a, 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 an horizon up above you know just just up front I knew that by the end of the semester um, this knowledge would be over for me for example over in a sense that I would no yeah. longer be uh, ahead of the, the, the company um, a few other projects were also going to be uh, finishing or finishing up sooner not very soon but soon or soon ish um, so I think that's what really got me through you know thinking that sure this is going to be tough for this long but I know that once it reaches the end I'll be I'll be all right also keeping your head above the water you know focusing on on, on the things you enjoy and really enjoying them those things only when you're uh, doing or with those things I think those are two things that can help what is your biggest weakness weakness mm -hmm. um, I'm really lazy <laughs> no I am I wouldn't call that a weakness per se I think we'll, we'll get somewhere after this but um, sometimes I feel like there are times in which I just don't do what I should be doing. It's 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 true. Okay. It's it's sort of a, a a misconception that I I I do work a lot. That's that's for sure. But I think I could work less if my working was more uh, continued. You know, like a more of a yeah. straight line. There are times in which I I just don't feel like doing anything, and I don't do anything. <laughs> And maybe that's that's what allows me to do more things than than, than, than people would would assume. Um, because when I'm not doing anything, I'm actually not doing anything. I'm either uh, listening to music or just walking around. There's 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 those times in which I stop and just not do anything. That could be a weakness because if the time comes for when I need to be present 24/7 to do something which is not what what happened with Genealogy, which might have been the, the closest experience to that, um, then then maybe I will I will lack the success that people might require from me at that time. So far it's been all right, I've been able to manage, but I'd say that that's my main weakness. And what is your biggest joy? What makes you the happiest? What makes me the happiest? Being with the people I, I like. There's There's nothing to me at least, there's nothing like uh, waking up and knowing that after this this day of, of work I'll be able to step out and for how long it is be with my friends, for example at night, have a few drinks. Uh, it's really what sometimes puts me through the, the, the hard stuff, when, when, when there seems to be no way around the work that you have to do i try to focus on the the next time that i know i'll be with the people i enjoy not that i don't don't enjoy the people i work with because i do but um being with people i like in a way that doesn't involve me having to uh exceed my mental ability <laughs> or put my brain to work too much because i think that's also important um there is this this sentence i use sometimes which people seem to, to mistake with uh, me being a bit of a, a junk <laughs> it, which is that I say that uh, let's let's get some drinks I don't mean that in, in the sense that I want to get wasted or I want to you know pass out <laughs> drunk I mean that because and I usually say this after I've, I've either completed a project or finished a presentation or whatever but I say this due to the fact that after a moment of stress the thing that I enjoy the most doing is being and speaking to people that share some of my interests, whether they are uh, my friendships or work or technology or whatever it is. Okay, another thing that where you where I think you excel is public speaking. How do you mm -hmm. think that from what you've seen so far, how can people 
vastly improve their speaking skills. All right, that's a nice question. Um, I think I'll start by saying how I learn to enjoy public speaking, because I think that's what it is. People don't speak well in public because people don't enjoy speaking in public. Um, I've had I've had the experience of, of of people being nervous while they're on stage or while they're almost getting on stage, and and if that's the case, some most of the times actually, uh, their their speech is not going to go well. The 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 way that they're going to speak, people are going to understand that it's that they're nervous, and that will come out as them not being sure of what they're saying. So what I try to do is. One, and this is, 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 is may, maybe the most important part of, of, my, of my advice. Turn your nervousness into excitement. Because the feeling is very similar if you think about it. You're, you get very jittery, uh, you can't sit straight, uh, you start knocking your, your, your foot on the floor, um, your hands start to tremble. Um, and that's sort of how you feel when you're really excited to go do something. Times a hundred, sure, yeah, of course. But if in your head, you start to think about that nervousness as if it were excitement, then that's halfway done to getting better results when speaking in public. Um, that's probably the main advice that I can give you. Also, and this, this is also really important, um, I like to tell stories. Sorry. I like to tell stories. I feel like people every since every since we 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 grow up or we we start to, you know, live, we're used to to to, to hearing stories. Like our parents tell you bedtime bedtime stories. What well, the shows you listen to on television are sort of a, a story uh, uh, narrative. Uh, the the books you read, the the, the the things you learn at school, there is a be a beginning and then there's an end, right? Um, so we're used to that format. We're used to being told stories. We're we're used to listening to stories and maybe we're uh, we're also used to telling them. So I I feel like every time I'm saying something, even if it's just a regular conversation. I try to have a narrative. I have a, a, a point where I'm, I'm starting at. I, I know where I'm going to finish. What's in the be in between, I'm not so sure about it. But I know of a few places I want to go before I get to the end. They don't have to be in a, in a perfect alignment, but I know where I'm going to want to you know, be at minute 5 or minute 20 or minute uh, 50. Uh, do you want to stop for a minute and go in my car? Yeah, because, yeah. Okay. It, because it's raining, so we have to move. So sorry. Um, yeah, those are possibly the, the two main things that I try to do. Um, I try to really enjoy what I'm talking about as well, because other, otherwise you won't really be able to say anything yeah. interesting. And also, it's, it's really important to think about how... Who gives a fuck if the people you're talking to enjoy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, sure. It's it's not you know binary. It's not as if uh, as if those those people shouldn't enjoy what you're talking about. But it's really up to you to be interested in, in what you're saying. It should be you should be the one to enjoy what you're saying because you're the one who's speaking, uh, uh, speaking to, you know generally. But yeah, not focusing too much on what other people are thinking. Be the best you can be at that moment for yourself, not for everyone else. You're the one who matters now. You barely post on social media. How important do you think it is for a small business to, to stay relevant or to get more and bigger clients? It's really important, in my opinion. But for the small business, not for me. I, I think uh, social media as, as a whole, or, or generally speaking, is um, very toxic to people. The way that we try to, to get other other people's lives to, or actually to try to get our lives to be like other people's um, because we see them as being so great on social media is something that really scares me in a sense. 
Um, and so I, ter- I try to keep what I do to myself, uh, even though I'm on most platforms like Facebook and Instagram. Um, re- in regards to, to smaller businesses and stuff, I do see a lot of value in that, especially uh, uh, LinkedIn, for example, or, or now Instagram, if, if you're organizing an event for younger people, even Twitter, if you're, you're focusing more on, on technology, for example. I, I think all of those are great platforms for you to share content. And, and that's where I think many people um, get it wrong in, in, in what, what it has to do with, with social networking. Maybe we shouldn't be sharing our lives or, or the details to our lives uh, and, and more so sharing um, our interests uh, and, and cool articles we read and, and actual good news that, that we, we hear from, from other people on the internet. Mm-hmm. Where do you see um, UI design in 10 years? With a raise of audio, how long do you think it will take to audio take over UI design? Because it's much faster to it's much right. faster to say Alexa, order me a pizza, and then go to the phone, open the app. Right. I was just reading on that yesterday, actually. So it's quite interesting that you say that. Um, it, yeah, there's there's people who who there's kids who've grown up learning what uh, an, an assistant, a personal assistant is, you know, uh, uh, a computer voice mm-hmm. yeah. like Alexa or Siri. And they're so used to that, that it's kind of weird for them how they can't yet interact with other parts of their life just by speech, you know, by talking. There's one big thing, one big question for me regarding um, regarding whether that will be Uh, for the near future, which is accessibility. It's such a a big part of of web development right now and and technology, how we can create a more inclusive uh, world for everyone, a place where everyone has the same access to information as everyone else, regardless regardless of their physical disabilities or, 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 or whatever it is, that thinking of a system that is guided through sound only is really a really hard concept to grasp for me. Like, how could we be uh, solving the the issue for people who are deaf, for example, or hard of hearing? Um, do we still have access to a screen? Is that screen uh, uh, um, as important to you, UI interaction for them as it is for everyone else? How will that work? You know. But it's really interesting uh, the way that things are going. Uh, Voice is such a natural way of, of response and of commands for us. It's one of the thir- the first things we learn to do is how to speak. Um, how can machines interpret that in a way that makes sense for us humans? Artificial intelligence seems to be the, the, the most correct answer. But we've learned from experience that that is not the only answer. And that there are a thousand other ways to solve the same issue that artificial intelligence and, and all of those newly developed technologies that are, have been, of course, developed for uh, tens of, 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 of years, but that are only now starting to come to, to the consumer market. I think there's a few ways for other things to start developing without the use of those technologies. Yeah, great. That's it. Yeah? Yeah. Ah, awesome. Thank you so much. No problem. Yeah. It was my pleasure. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>